Hey guys, welcome to Lone Aspen. I'm Jeff. And I'm Chris. Today we're going to be talking about a couple of different uh, woodworking projects you can make. Um, whether it's for just for fun, for practice, or if it's out of necessity, it's good skills to learn. Um, now we've taken a number of people out here and uh, trying to identify certain items that they forgot or while they're out here got lost or broken. Uh, some of those items include spoons or sporks and uh, toilet paper. Uh, and what we're going to be talking about right now is making um, like eating utensils. Uh, like chopsticks, spoons, ladles, uh, and bowls. Yeah, and when you when you want to start out on your woodworking skills, um, just like when you're working in stone, you you need to uh, know what the properties are of the wood you're working with. Now, for the for the the bowl and spoon and the cup, we would be using aspen uh, for for our area. Um, aspen is a very short grain wood, and so it doesn't splinter. Last thing you want to have happen when you, you make a, uh, a, you know, a long soup spoon is to jam it in your mouth and get a splinter, run a splinter through the side of your mouth. So, um, likewise, park benches, a lot of the tops of park benches are often made from aspen because it's a wood that doesn't splinter. Uh, now, say for a chopstick, on the other hand, it would be more field expedient to make a chopstick out of something like um, pine. Pine is a very long grain wood, and when you go to snap a piece, it will snap and break in long, very long pieces. Willow's not like that. Willow's like, uh, or I mean, aspen's like willow, in that it's a very short grain wood. Um, so in your selection, let's say you want to make a, uh, a spoon or a ladle or something. This would be about the diameter you want to start out with. Something that's just about big enough to get in your face hole. But this piece is a fine example of what you don't want to use. Although it is standing dead, which is the kind of wood you're looking for for a project like this, snowshoes, anything you're really looking for, even if it's firewood, standing dead is your best wood for everything. Green wood's not really all that useful for, but maybe 5% of the projects we have out, we use out here. So this piece of standing dead aspen has the bark off of it, but it started to crack, you see. Now, aspen grows in a spiral, which makes it kind of tricky to work with sometimes versus a, 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 a straighter grain wood like maybe pine. Um, it doesn't want to split right. Um, so you, you don't want something that's already cracked. While we were out searching around, I came across this wonderful piece here of standing dead aspen, and it has no cracks on it at all. And um, it's completely dry. The bark was already off of it. It's very smooth, and I don't know about you, but that screams soup ladle to me. Um, it, Chris has found a couple good pieces here too. Yeah, um, here's another piece of standing dead aspen. Um, this is maybe about the diameter you would want for a bowl. I mean, you can make it any size you want, but this is an example of what you don't want is a lot of uh, cracks running throughout the thing. Um, what you're looking for is more something that looks like this. Now this piece has uh, one little crack starting to run through it, but it won't be an issue making the bowl. and we could always patch that up with some uh, pine sap later on. Yeah, you could coat the outside of, of whatever you make if it's got a, a couple small cracks in it with uh, uh, sap glue and still be able to throw hot rocks in there and boil your water, or your dinner, or whatever, what have you. Um, now remember, it, you know, aspen is not a big round tree, so if, you, if you're thinking in, in terms of a cereal bowl, what you might actually only end up being able to find is something the diameter of a coffee cup. Now, if you feel like putting a work in it, there's no reason you can't make a two-foot-tall coffee cup and boil, you know, gallons of water in it. Uh, there's, there's no reason you can't do that. Um, but, yeah, it's unfortunate that this piece was cracked. The, the tree, uh, you know, just, you know, it, it is actually almost starting to rot. We noticed when we started to cut through it that there were soft pits in it. And once being dry and rotted is just as bad as being soaking wet with water or green. Uh, this one... This one had a little dry rot going on inside of it, but nothing, nothing that's not manageable. Um, so bear with us uh, as we learn to video edit, as you learn to make uh, stuff like this. Um, because a project like this takes a long time, guys. And, you know, you, you think um, about dishes, you know. you got to keep grandma's dishes. Your mom told you that growing up. Well, what's so important about grandma's dishes? Because some of them aren't really worth any money. Um, the thing is, is that just a hundred years ago, dishes were very expensive and very hard to make. And so you go back, you know, a thousand years and you got a, a, a carved piece of soapstone bowl. Man, that was something to have. And that was 
you know, expensive in the amount of man hours it took. It might take Chris two nights to finish that bowl and make it very nice. It might take me a night and a half to make a nice um, ladle here. And, you know, once you put the, that kind of energy forward into something like that, you really kind of want to hang on to it, which is why chopsticks are kind of nice because they're field exper expedient. You don't feel bad about throwing them in the fire because you can make another set tomorrow night. Um, but nonetheless, you know, having the woodworking skills are very important. So um, bear with us and thank you for stopping by.